This is a special report from About Space Today. Welcome to Special Report. I'm David Denault. SpaceX will once again partner with Jarek Isaacman in a fundraiser for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital to help eradicate childhood cancer. The mission is called Polaris Dawn, one of three missions to include an attempt to be the first ever commercial spacewalk and eventually culminating on Elon Musk's first manned starship. Details next as America and the world is listening to Special Report on About Space Today. D&D Cruise and Tours is the official agent for About Space, and we invite you to come fly away to all-inclusive resort island destinations, or a cruise vacation from Port Canaveral, and even visit the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, or just come and see the parks. Call for a discount cruise or an island getaway or the Florida beaches. Call today. The call is free, and so are our services. Call 877 747-8631. That's 877-747-8631. We are Florida's group travel specialists. Welcome back. To remind you, Jared Isaacman is the CEO of Shift4, the leader of integrated payment processing solutions. He is an accomplished pilot and astronaut serving as the commander of Inspiration4, the world's first all-civilian mission to space that helped raise over $240 million for St. Jude's. Billionaire space pioneer Isaacman talks about the first mission. Right, so, I mean, just starting with the the first one, Polaris Dawn, which is what um, we're getting ready for. Basically, we have three objectives on that mission. One, we're going to go to the highest uh, Earth orbit ever flown, so farther away from Earth uh, since the last time somebody walked on the moon 50 years ago, so that's pretty cool. Um, but besides just being, um, you know, a, a really interesting view and altitude, we're going to gain a lot from uh, radiation exposure really close to the Van Allen uh, radiation belt. And that, that informs two things. One, just vehicle design, because avionics don't like radiation. And two, if we are going to, you know, get to the moon, ideally get to Mars at some point and back, we'd like to do it and be, be healthy along the way. Uh, so maybe uh, find ways to develop some countermeasures to better protect crew on, their, on a, a journey that hopefully a lot of people will be able to undertake one day when, when Starship comes online. Uh, you know, two, we're going to do an EVA. So we're going to do a spacewalk. We're going to vent the entire Dragon capsule down to vacuum, and then we're going to exit the vehicle. And, and, and the reason for that is when we do get back to the moon and eventually get to Mars, we're probably going to want to leave the safety of our vehicle or habitat and get work done on the, on, the, on the surface of the planet. So we need to be able to make spacesuits not like one at a time, as it's been done over the last like 40 years, that cost hundreds of millions. We need to be able to mass produce lots of spacesuits for the amount of people that we hope someday be able to send to Mars. Um, Not to mention gaining experience with the operations will help um, future missions. And then third, we're going to communicate over Starlink satellite constellation. Uh, Instead of the the ground stations and satellites that were, you know, 40 years old that are kind of slow. Uh, So when we do get to Mars and you want to send a video message home, you can be able to do that. Um, You know, keep that good connection back to Earth. So, So that's one of our three objectives, along with about 40 science and research experiments over five days. A five day mission in Earth orbit. So is this truly a joint venture? So it's a partnership with SpaceX. Uh, So that's why we have two of our crew members are actually SpaceX engineers. Uh, So very talented employees, Um, you know, Anna Menon, she's our uh, mission specialist and uh, our medical officer. So she was a biomedical uh, uh, controller at NASA. Uh, She's a lead mission director. So if you saw Apollo 13, she's the Ed Harris in the room. Uh, So you can imagine what she would gain from going to space and being able to bring that to mission control. And then um, uh, uh, Sarah Gillis, she was the lead astronaut trainer for SpaceX. Uh, she trained uh, myself and the Inspiration4 crew. She's trained every NASA astronaut crew that's gone to space on a Dragon. Uh, you can imagine the benefit of having a, a lead astronaut trainer actually go to space to train what should be hopefully hundreds of thousands of people in the future. So SpaceX is contributing talent to it. They're making a lot of investments in this mission for spacesuits, vehicle changes, life support changes to support in EVA. Um, you know, Polaris is contributing equally into it. And the actual objectives for our missions were, were actually jointly formed with uh, shortly after the Inspiration4 mission. And the pilot for the first Polaris Dawn mission is Scott Kid Poteet. Kid, introduce yourself. Absolutely. So, Scott Kid Poteet, um, I am currently the uh, mission pilot for Polaris Dawn, which is the first mission uh, of the Polaris program. Um, you know, the, the whole premise behind uh, what we're doing with the uh, Polaris program is to 
um, identify and test some of the developmental technologies that's going to help bridge that gap between the Falcon 9 and Dragon mm -hmm. and their next generation rocket of Starship. So wow. Jared will crew the first crewed uh, Starship mission. And, and so based on that 65 year legacy of NASA, uh, it, we truly are standing on the shoulders of giants and, and mm -hmm. everything that they've been able to accomplish. And, and we're trying to, you know, contribute and continue to push that envelope in space exploration and, and what we're trying to accomplish with the Polaris program. The mission Polaris Dawn. It will carry a four person crew farther in space than man has ever traveled on a five day orbital mission that includes the first commercial spacewalk. Continue to follow us each Tuesday on America's Return to Space with John Gomez. On Friday, America in Space with Dawn Meyer, our Space Coast News Editor. And join the About Space team live from the Kennedy Space Center on Monday, August the 26th for the launch of Polaris Dawn. Watch About Space Today's live coverage on our YouTube channel on Monday, August the 26th for the launch of Polaris Dawn and Space History. I'm David Denault. This has been a special report from About Space Today.